What up, dogs? Aspen Lab coming at you. I'm chilling in the crib with my boys, Master Impressive and Director Awesome. We just kicking it old school. You smell that? I see they got something good cooking on the audio grill for y'all. That'd be some tasty jerky right there. If you see me in the neighborhood, roll up and holla at your homie. As for my boys, show them some love and subscribe to their new podcast. That's some real good original house flavor right there. Pod Jerky. Subscribe and follow on SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter, Podbean, YouTube. You'll find them. And if not, they will definitely reach out to y'all. Man, they out there hustling. Know what I'm saying? They everywhere. Big up, my Pod Jerky dogs. Roof. And welcome back to another edition of Pod Jerky. I'm your host, Director Awesome. Today is going to be a solo episode until we welcome back Mrs. Awesome as the coronavirus hampers Master Impressive and I from getting together. Mrs. Awesome and I have had a pre-recorded conversation that it will play later on in the episode. Today we're going to talk about pets. Well, more about dogs because that's pretty much all we know. Now, for those of you who aren't dog lovers or own pets, let me tell you a little bit about our experience. Our dogs have come to mean so much in our lives. For those that don't know, Mrs. Awesome and I are unable to have children, so our dogs are basically our children. I know that seems a little weird, but this is all we know. We were never given the opportunity to share our love with children. For those that don't know, we have had three dogs in the past 10 years. It started with Sadie, who was a golden retriever, and we had her from when she was just a pup. She was my buddy from day one, and I was heartbroken when we lost her. While we had Sadie, we decided to get a second dog and named her Indy. Indy is a Maltese Terrier mix. When Sadie passed, we thought Indy would be heartbroken, but she went upon her day like nothing happened. A year later, while recovering at home, I started researching Golden Retriever breeders and came across an ad and decided to call. We basically decided picking out Aspen, and now we have a Terrier and a Golden Retriever again. If anyone is interested in a Golden Retriever, hit us up on our social media platforms, and I will forward the info on to you. This breeder has been breeding Golden Retrievers exclusively for 55 years and is one of the only certified Golden Retriever breeders in Ontario. He knows his stuff, so hit me up on social media and I'll pass on the info. We live in a very disconnected culture, and what is the one thing that we can depend on? Our dogs. They are the constant in our lives. I firmly believe that dogs have one fault, and that fault is their lives are way too short. There's a really good quote from Josh Billings, and he says, a dog is the only thing that loves you more than you love yourself. Now this couldn't be any truer, and let me explain. Anytime we leave the house, even if it is to shovel the snow on the driveway or drop something off at the neighbors, there they are to greet you like you've been gone for a week, wagging their tails and bringing you their toys. My wife often jokes that when she comes home from work, the dogs always greet her with such enthusiasm and she wonders why I don't do the same. So from time to time, I'll stand by the door and wiggle my ass like I'm wagging my tail. Sometimes I'll get a good laugh out of Mrs. Awesome for that. The loyalty of a dog is second to none. When I was sick in bed with the kidney failure, my dog literally laid in bed with me the entire day and didn't leave my side until Mrs. Awesome got home from work. As almost to say, don't worry buddy, I gotcha. The dogs always want to cuddle with you on the couch and just generally be around you all the time. That is unconditional love and that is why I can't argue with that quote. Mrs. Awesome and I have been through some tough times with our dogs, but we've also had been through some great times. Mrs. Awesome and I will describe uh, some of the tougher times that we've had to go through with our dogs, but there have always been happy times, times that will remain with us forever. 
They have always made us laugh with some of the stupid shit they've done and made us cry when there was something wrong with them. We actually wouldn't have it any other way. Dogs find a way to keep people together. I started a dog walking group in our neighborhood. Within the first few hours, there were probably about 30 people on it. And today there are over 60. Now, before this, we really didn't know anyone in our neighborhood besides our direct neighbors and a couple of friends that we met about 10 years ago. How you asked? Yep, you guessed it, walking our dogs. Our dogs brought us together and we're still friends to this day. Now with the new dog walking group, we have met some wonderful people, heard some interesting stories, have visited each other's houses, and none of this would have been possible without our dogs. You see, dogs help people through some of the most difficult times in their lives, so we wanted to dedicate this episode to our furry little friends. Without them in our lives, things would be very, very different. Right now, we're going to get into the interview that Mrs. Awesome and I had about the dogs we've had. It's a look back on some of the misfortunes that have happened in the past 10 years with them. So without further ado, let's get into that interview. All right, I'm back here with Mrs. Awesome. Hello, everybody. And I swear to you, we are going to make her the star of the show. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about our pets. Now, you and I have been married for almost nine years now. Scary. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. And in that time frame, we've had three dogs with each other. Uh-huh. And what are the pets that you had before we got married? So I had a dog uh, coming out of my graduating year of college. I had a little beagle dachshund mix. His name was Sandy. And growing up, I had a golden retriever uh, named Molson. So we've basically only had dogs, so we're not really talking about pets here. We're actually talking about dogs only because we we only really know about dogs, right? Um, I had cats growing up, but I was allergic to them, so we kept having to give them away. Yeah, I don't really like cats. Uh, Not that I don't like them. It's You can't really walk them or they don't really want to have your your cuddle time, I guess, with you and uh, the stuff that dogs do, right? So we're, we're dog people. Uh, I don't dislike cats. It's just that we're more of dog people than we are cat people. So uh, when we first got married uh, nine years ago, almost nine years ago, we actually got a golden retriever. And uh, this was from my uh, one of the students at my mother's school that she was working at. Uh, his parents, I guess, were dog breeders. And um, my mom had told them that we were looking for a dog actually to get. So we ended up going through them to get this puppy and we brought her home and she was just fantastic what we remember we remember the good times with her and the um the puppy phase we don't really remember much of i mean at least you don't i i remember the puppy phase i think you make stuff up i I don't to make me feel better about our new puppy I, i don't i don't and uh so we brought her home and we named her sadie now we had an awesome time with sadie and do you remember how hard it was picking out her name it was. It was. Uh, yeah, we we went through a whole bunch of names, right? Like it was. I, I kept on asking for superhero names, right? It was. Uh, you doing kept asking for boy names. Boy for names. a girl dog. Right. So it was like Thor, and uh, what were the other names? That Rampage. Was last time? Rampage. Some Ace. UFC fighters. Yeah, some UFC fighter nicknames, which I thought were going to be cool, but I mean, it was a female dog, so it wasn't actually very, uh, very good to get. I guess. I guess, but. Rampage would have been a good name for her because I know you don't remember this, but we did have this discussion saying that we should have named her Rampage because she was a a spaz when she was a puppy. And you don't remember this, though. So uh, we we brought her home. We had her for, what was it, three or four years. And then Indy came along. Yeah. And uh, the way that happened was is that our neighbors at the time, they don't live there anymore. So our neighbors at the time, their mother was visiting from Quebec and her dog had puppies and they ended up bringing the dogs, like the puppies outside. So I was home alone and I got to see them and I said, please don't let my wife see this uh, cause she's gonna want one. And sure enough, you pulled up into the driveway as <laughs> she was outside. At that same moment. Yeah, at that same time she pulled up into the driveway and uh, we ended up getting a second dog. Now. What happened with Indy? I've been bugging you for 
close to two years at that point for a second dog. Right. And at that time, we were trying to start a family and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? Let's not let's not get a second dog right now. And I, I, I didn't even want to go there at that point. But She was my surrogate mm, baby. Yeah. So the, the opportunity presented itself. So we actually took it and jumped on it and, and ran with it. So... We have uh, Indy now, which I named after the Indianapolis Colts, which is my favorite football team. Now, I'm really not sure how you got me to give in to her name. I, I don't know. You just, that was the last name that you said I could take. And I was like, okay, perfect. Because I gave you a whole bunch more, right? I gave you Ace and Rampage again. And, and I gave you a whole bunch of these. And you kept saying, no, this is a tiny little dog. So this wasn't a Golden Retriever. This is a Terrier mix. And uh, we don't know. It's kind of like a mutt, right? So um, we brought her home. And as we speak, we can hear her in the background a little bit crying and uh, whining a little bit, which is good because this is like the pet episode. And I have a feeling that she wants to come over here and be on the show with us. But uh, we're going to try and leave her on the other side of the room right now so she doesn't make too much noise. Um, Anyways, uh, we we ended up bringing her home and... um, so where was I here? Uh, I had to go over to the other room and get the dog because she was uh, whining. So she's sitting here on my lap while we're doing this recording right now. And uh, I feel like she wants to be on the show. So maybe we'll get some uh, vocal uh, attitude here later on. Anyways, uh, so we brought Indy home and she was six weeks old, I believe, when we brought her home. Mm-hmm. And when we had first brought her home, she was only three weeks old. And we brought her into the house and we showed her to Sadie. And Sadie took one sniff of her and what happened? She had no idea. She was actually afraid of her because she was so tiny. She fit into the palm of your hand. And I'm not even sure she smelt like a dog at that point, if they have a smell. And Sadie just was like freaked out. She didn't know what to think of her. Yeah. So. But Seed was such a wuss. Yeah, she She was. She was a bit of a scary cat. She was. So we brought, we, you know, we waited until, we were supposed to wait until eight weeks to bring the puppy home. And then um, the the uh, mother, I guess, had to leave back to her hometown and said, okay, it's either you take the puppy now or you're going to have to wait until the next time I'm back, which would have been quite a while by the time they, they came back. So we decided to take the puppy home at six weeks old and we brought her home. And uh, It's important to-, to know she was weaned off of mom. Yes. She yeah. was eating solid food, so we didn't. We didn't take her too early. Like, she had already weaned off mom. So, for for those that are worried, she was okay. So, let me tell you, like, this this little one, Indy, here, was quite the little shit when she was a a puppy. (laughs) Uh, She got into everything. Uh, She thought she ruled the house. She thought... She loved cords. You know, oh, she loved to eat our cords, those lamp cords. Sadie liked furniture. Yes. So, she ate a chair, the side of a chair, when she was a puppy, Indy liked cords. So every tablet, phone cord, extension cord, lamp cords. Lamp cords she liked to chew on, she, yeah. She destroyed. Like Sadie, I know, had bad separation anxiety. So when we left for work in the morning and came home, half the couch was gone. She had chewed the whole side of the couch, right? So And keep in mind we had kennel trained Sadie and we were at the point where we were trying to wean her off of kennel training. So we would leave her out in little spurts here and there. And I think it was the, the first day we left her alone for a full day. We came home to half a less a chair. Yeah. So we learned our lesson then. But then she seemed to calm down once Indy was here, actually. Um, we had some big issues with kennel training Indy. Uh, she didn't like it at all. So we tried one night when she was a puppy and... We put her in the kennel at nighttime and in the middle of the night, she all she would do is really was cry and she would whine and whine and whine. So you would actually get up with her and you'd come downstairs and you'd sit on the couch until she fell asleep and then you'd bring her back up. I, I wouldn't compare it to a newborn baby because obviously, don't get me wrong, guys, kids and dogs are totally different. But I, I felt sympathy for the sleep deprived parents out there because no matter what we did, Indy just would not kennel train and so we would literally sit up with her for hours upon hours after dinner to the point where she was falling over from exhaustion and we'd be like okay great she's gonna sleep tonight 
and she might lie in there for 10 or 15 minutes and then she would just start crying and it didn't matter how tired she was she would just not sleep in that freaking kennel yeah and we put the kennel right next to the bed and it was just it it was useless so i mean the one night she just started howling and she started uh, like she sounded actually like a seagull and if i can i'll edit in the clip of what she sounded like uh, as a puppy uh, being in her kennel and it was just we didn't know what to do at that point because we were like we're not getting any sleep at night. Um, our other golden was actually in her own kennel at nighttime and she enjoyed it in there at night. We just said, you know what, go up to your house and she would run up the stairs and she'd go right into her house. So we decided to put Indy in the kennel with uh, Sadie and see if that would work because maybe she would have, I guess, the warmth of another dog beside her. And that still didn't work, right? No. Yeah. No, then neither of them slept. Right. So... We ended up getting up and you you got frustrated one night and said, okay, that's it. I'm going to go put them downstairs on the main floor. And you came down here, you put them uh, on the couch and you came back upstairs. And I think that was the first night of good sleep that we had in in months. Yeah. So I I was like, okay, enough's enough. Nobody's sleeping. At least I'll take Indy downstairs. But the minute I get up, then Sadie wanted up. So I took Sadie with me and we came downstairs. We laid on the couch and she everybody fell asleep and i snuck off the couch i crawled back upstairs nobody noticed i left the room and everybody slept and we woke up in the morning and we said these are the new sleeping arrangements and so since then the dog slept on the main floor yeah so that worked out and then i mean for the past few years everything was okay and then we came to a point with Sadie um, where, like, Sadie was, I don't want to say my dog, um, but she was my dog. She um, was. I was home with her in the summer times because I'm off in the summer. And uh, so she became, like, my buddy. And I still remember the one time you had gone camping and I actually went upstairs to take her to bed and I fell down the stairs uh, trying to get her. And I was unconscious at the bottom of the stairs and I woke up and Sadie was laying beside me. I mean, like that was the kind of like, I guess, bond that we had with the dog. And uh, she was one of like, she was my buddy, right? So we came to a point, I believe it was a year ago, maybe Mm -hmm. a year ago. And we ended up finding a lump on Sadie's tail and we took her into the vet. I mean, I think we wanted to see if it was just an infection or what it was and the vet told us that it was actually a tumor right or a cancer yeah. or it yeah. was a tumor yeah so we we said okay like what are our next steps so what they did was tell us that we could amputate the tail and we said okay well what are the like is there anything wrong with doing that and they said no they don't really need their tail it's just kind of there to wag and that's just what they have and There would be no health complications with it or whatever it was. So we decided to amputate the tail and we had booked the appointment. And I guess we had the cone on her head at that point uh, so that she didn't bite at the the infection because I think it was infected and we had her on meds at the time as well. So we were waiting for our appointment, which I believe was the following week Mm -hmm. of this happening. Now, we went up to bed one night and... You heard a thump, I I think, downstairs. I heard her choke almost is kind of what the sound was like. And I came, uh, it woke me up. So I came downstairs and she had thrown up um, her dinner and she was having a hard time breathing and she she just wasn't acting normal. So I knew that there was something wrong. So I remember you yelling up to me that something, you know, something's happening. Something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, like something's like really wrong with Sadie. So I bolted out of bed and I came down the stairs. You'll never see Tom move so fast as to when something is happening with that dog. (laughs) Yeah. So we, uh, we noticed her laying on the floor. She couldn't get up. Her gums were turning blue. 
Uh, I, I believe she wasn't getting enough oxygen or whatever it was at the time. We called the emergency vet. They told us, okay, load her up in the car and bring her over. And uh, we just said she's not responding. She's not responding. And we ended up, uh, I ended up calling her name out and she lifted her head slightly. And I was like, okay, she's still, she's still with us. Let's get her in the car. And I was shaking and, and I didn't even have the strength. Like, I don't even know how you did it. I didn't have the strength to lift her. And you ended up lifting her and putting her in the car. Now she was a 65 pound dog. So she wasn't small by any means. And it's not that I was weak. I was just shaking. I didn't know what to do in that, in that situation. I know we had to bring her to the vet, but I was just, yeah, it was like the adrenaline kicked in and she honestly felt like she weighed like a feather that night. I just picked her up and carried her to the car and, and put her in the back seat later down. And we, yeah, so you ended up driving and it was a snowstorm or an ice storm that night. Snowstorm. Yeah, we had a snowstorm that night. So we had to drive to the vet and you ended up driving and I was keeping an eye on Sadie in the back seat, making sure she was okay. But while you were driving, you kept asking, is she okay? Is she okay? Is she okay? And I didn't want to say anything while you were driving, but I did have my hand on her and I, I, I felt her take her last breath in the car, which was heartbreaking, but I, I couldn't say anything while you were driving because the roads were really bad at that point. And we're talking about what, midnight, one o'clock in the morning at some point th mm -hmm. this time. Yeah. Um, so it was dark out. The roads were really crappy. We didn't want to get into an accident. So I kind of held back and didn't want to say anything. I'm like, she's okay. We'll just get to the vet. We'll get there. We'll get there. I know she had passed by the time we had got there. As soon as you hit the parking lot, I jumped out of the car and I was yelling, no, no, no. Uh, we went into the vet and uh, they they took her vitals and they told us that she was she was gone. She had she had a heart attack. So uh, I don't know um, what caused it. Was there an underlying issue besides the tumor that she had? Did the tumor cause it? Was it anxiety because of the tumor? We we don't know what happened. We opted not to get the pathology test done. Um, we had talked about it. But I think at that point we had decided that it, I mean, any result we got back wasn't bringing her back. Yeah. So. So they decided, we just decided on getting her cremated and then she got her ashes spread at a farm somewhere, right? So, and and we brought Indy with us because her and Indy were actually really best friends. They like laid together, they played together outside, you know, they did everything together. They were home all day together. So we thought Indy was going to have a really, really tough time with this. And it turns out she could care less. Um, well, it's not that she could care less. It's just all of a sudden, all the bad behavior Indy had growing up through the, what, I guess six years, five years she was with us up until Sadie passed. Indy was just, she was bad. She would pee in the house. Like we couldn't kennel train her. We couldn't pee straight like house train her i mean she went on her pee pads so yeah. no, we're not we don't want to make it look like she was peeing all over the house no no but. no sorry and but like inevitably she always missed her pee pad um you know she she never really cried at the back door to go out and for whatever reason once we brought indy home and she was the only dog in the house it was like everything we had tried to teach her for the past five years like kicked in yeah and and all the training we had done over the last five years all of a sudden just kicked in she wasn't doing she didn't even need her pee pads anymore which no. was so strange and she was snuggly and wonderful so our biggest concern was whether or not she was actually going to be able to stay on the main floor by herself because she had basically slept on sadie when she was here so we were curious around how Indy was going to do on her own on the main floor. And that's the only thing she didn't do well with. Yeah, she did not want to be down here by herself. So the big sucks that we are for our dogs, we caved and she now sleeps in the bed with us. Yeah, well, she's at the head of the, on, on, on your side of the bed. But quick backstory about that is that when I was off with the kidney issues, uh, she was laying in bed with me all day and she would actually just lay on your pillow on your side of the bed. And that's just, yeah. just that just became her bed. My right? pillow. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's not going to lay on mine while I'm laying on it. 
right? So but we could have taught her to lay on a blanket. We could have, but we didn't want her sleeping in between us because, you know, we roll over. She's a small dog. We might, I don't know. So we just decided to let her stay on the pillow, and she was fine with that. She was comfortable. And, uh, I mean, that, that was her sleeping arrangements for then. So as for I was... Year. Yeah. So as I was sick in bed um, for the past year, I was... I guess getting bored, getting a little bit of, uh, um, what do you call it, when you're home all the time and stir crazy, house crazy, whatever cabin it is, fever. you know, cabin fever. So I started researching uh, dogs and dog prices and stuff like that. And then I started to send some pictures to uh, Mrs. Awesome over here and said, uh, look evil. here. Yeah, look Pure here. Evil. Um, here's some dogs for sale. Like, what do you think? And keep in mind, my big 40th was coming up. And I had zero intention of getting another dog. I really, really didn't. I just kind so it was of... just torture, yeah, really. Kind of, yeah. So we ended up um, talking about it. And then I said, here, look, I found a golden retriever breeder. And, no, uh, but first it was the Bernie yeah, yeah. retriever mixes. Yeah. And for whatever reason, we just could not arrange a time that would work to go and visit them. Because they were ready to go home that weekend. Yeah. And it, I mean, that was what it was meant to be, right? We are, we're, we like golden retrievers. They're fantastic dogs. So we ended up uh, seeing this breeder uh, on Kijiji, I believe, and ended up contacting them. And he has such a long wait list for uh, dogs, I guess, that... He, it was a couple of months that we had to wait, I believe, for a litter well, we to come to, out, right? We had to put a deposit down right away for the next litter. Right. So yeah. we ended up doing that. And then we ended up going and picking out our puppy when the when the puppies were born. Are we breezing over the fact that he looks like Santa Claus? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. So and I'm he, not going to talk too much about it. And he lived on a farm in the middle yeah. of nowhere that yeah. made us worry slightly that we weren't going to make it out alive. That we were walking into a Pulp Fiction scene. Yeah. You know, so um, we ended up going in, picking up this puppy, uh, picking out the puppy. So we haven't picked her up yet. And then we had to wait the standard eight weeks till they got their shots and they got, you know, dewormed and all this stuff like that. So when she hit the eight week mark, we went over there, we picked her up. We were very excited. Uh, I think we actually brought Indy with us. No. No, we didn't. We to, yeah. um, so we took her home in the car. I think she slept all the way home. She was still only eight weeks old, so she was very mm. young. And She's so cute. She was. She was really cute. And we ended up, um, the next day or the day after that, we brought her outside into the backyard. Yeah. And let me tell you, this dog has been nothing but problems since we've gotten her. And not in a bad way, but medically. She's had medical problems since she's got home. But but due you know, to her own stupidity, is that the right word? And her owner's lack of paying attention while she was outside. Yeah. Um, so we brought her outside to go to the washroom trying to, I guess, potty train her. I guess a uh, house train her house from, trainer, yeah. you know. And... I would just like to say, too, before we found out about all this, Tom's grown up. Say it again. You grew up with dogs. I did, yeah. I had had a, two dogs in my lifetime at that point, and I did not know that mm -hmm. so many things in nature are poisonous to dogs. Things in I, your own backyard, right? Like, like we're things we've been around our entire lives. We've had two dogs in this house prior to the and puppy nothing's coming ever home, happened, yeah. and we've had no problems. This stuff's been in our yard for years. Turns out we have chosen the most toxic plants to put in our garden. Right. So we, we, we let her outside that one night and she took a bite off of, wouldn't you guess it, a hostess plant. Now, we had no clue that hostess were poisonous to dogs at all, right? Yeah. So she took a bite of the hostess plant. She didn't ingest it. She had it in her mouth. But apparently all you need is the, I guess, the syrup or the film, whatever yeah, is the on leaf. the hostess on, on the leaf just has to get into your bloodstream. So if she were to have it in her mouth, that would actually get into her bloodstream, right? And because she was so young, it was that much worse for her. So we, you noticed that she wasn't, like she was very lethargic at night. Yeah. Um, she had the runs She really had the bad. runs really, really bad. So we ended up calling the breeder and the breeder said, okay, give her this mixture of food. It was like uh, rolled oats with uh, ground beef that's boiled twice. 
and give her this mixture should clear it up didn't really clear it up so we ended up calling the emergency vet they said bring her in right away so we brought her in and she ended up throwing up i guess outside inside the vet's office finally she was dry heaving the whole night couldn't get anything to come up and we said okay that's a good sign we wanted her to throw up whatever's in there bothering her so they brought her into the uh, back room there they did a parvo test that came back negative and then they ended up having to keep her overnight. Now, keep in mind, this is our second night with the dog, right? I don't even think we'd night. had her at 48 hours at that point. Yeah, and uh, here, here we are. We have her in the emergency vet, not even two days into us having her. And that means, like, what? We're bad pet owners, right? So she just had gotten into something she shouldn't have. And us not knowing that that was actually poisonous to dogs. Come to find out, you know, we like that the dog was extremely dehydrated and... Um, what else? I think like her blood sugar level had dropped. Um, she was, she was basically poisoned by this yeah. plant. Right. So they had to keep her on IV all night and they Plus had to she keep her... still had the run. Yeah. So what was already a dangerous zone of dehydration was just being made worse by the fact that yeah. she couldn't keep anything inside. Right. So we, we, they kept her overnight and then. They had her on IV all night and then we called in the morning and they said that she had seemed to perk up, right? Um, so she's doing fine. But the thing with emergency vets is that they're usually open from the time the vet closes, your regular vet closes until they open. So we had to go back at seven in the morning, go and pick her up and then transport her over to our regular vet who then kept her the rest of the day. Um, she was... Yeah. She had this little IV in her arm and this little cloth cone. Eight weeks old, right? Like you oh, have to gosh, figure. Oh gosh, this a... little medical furball. Yeah. So we ended up leaving her there, and and our bill at the end of it, I mean, was sixteen or seventeen hundred dollars, something like that. And and I don't care because you know what, you're gonna pay that for your pets. No, like no different than you're gonna pay that for your family if you had to. They're part of your family. Um, but it was just an eye opener of how much it costs for emergencies, right? And the stuff with her didn't end there, right? And she would go on and she would do in the next year, how many more things have we had to take her to the vet for? She ended up eating She's uh, not even eight months yet. You know, what like do you mean year? <laughs> year, all right. She's she hasn't even turned eight months at this point right now. She's uh, a couple of days away from being eight months and she ate a boxwood plant. Which we have boxwood. Also poisonous. Also poisonous to dogs, apparently. And we didn't know that. And we have four of them in our backyard, in our garden. And she just got a bite of the leaves. And again, you said like she had the runs really bad. And was No, she... not for this one. So she had gone into the backyard. She came in the house and she was like, kind of like pawing at her face. And I thought, okay, she's probably ate something in the backyard and it's stuck. So I went and I kind of checked her mouth. And for sure, I had seen she had a boxwood leaf in between her teeth and her gums. And I think now, maybe unhealthily, I'm overly paranoid about her. So every little thing she does, Google has not been my friend. I think well, that's what we a, tend to a, do, right? A it's bit of a like... hypochondriac for yeah. her, not for myself, but for her. Um, and so I had just said, hey, Google is is uh, boxwood poisonous to dogs. And sure enough, it was. Uh, so I phoned the vet and the actual doctor had, wasn't in yet. It was just the techs and the nurses. So they phoned the vet and they called me back and said, yeah, you better bring her in. We got to pump her stomach. We, because you don't know how much she actually ingested. We need to get it out of her because yes, it can be very, very toxic. And the symptoms don't typically show up for a couple of hours after it starts to actually go through their digestive tract. So off we trek to the vet and she has to stay there for half a day because they have to basically force feed or force her to vomit. And then... Which they, they do with a charcoal kind of thing, no, I guess. it's like a tablet in their eye, he said. It's the strangest thing. That forces them to throw up. And then once they throw up, they give them charcoal then to absorb any toxins that is either one still in the stomach or two has started to work its way through the digestive tract. And that was about 500 bucks just, yeah. just for four hours worth of fun. Yep. And then uh, 
of course you have like you know your regular things that you have to do with your dogs you have to get them spayed uh, you have to get their shots done you know all the all the regular stuff that you would get done with your dog so at the end I mean we paid seven hundred and fifty dollars for the dog actually and at the end of it we've paid what thirty five hundred dollars in vet bills alone since she's been home and she's only been home for five months yeah uh, so she's been a pretty expensive dog um she's still in her puppy phase right now and uh it's uh it's a little crazy but we love her and uh, i mean she's really cute she's a really cute dog and she's too smart she is smart but she does really really dumb shit <laughs> she does a lot of dumb shit okay mm. um so i mean we wouldn't have it any different, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, she's we've, been. We've learned a lot. We we have learned a lot, and my dog is starting to get a little bit restless on my lap here, I'm and sure I think she wants her. to uh, wants to talk on the mic. It seems like, or she wants to give it a sniff. Go ahead. Can you say hi, Indy? <laughs> say hello. <gasps> Who's she that? has she has no idea what the microphone is right now, but that's okay. Um, anyways. Um, that's basically our pet stories that we have here. Dog stories. I shouldn't say pets because uh, we've only talked about dogs Didn't in this whole episode. Did we have a fish once? Did we have fish? Are fish pets? I think so. I mean, you got to feed them, but they don't do much. You can just look at them through the glass, right? You don't have to walk them. You don't have to do anything with them. You don't really talk to them, right? I had a hamster uh, growing up. Yeah. I lost the class hamster. Well, see, there you go. It's not really your hamster. It was the classes, right? And then that hamster probably got picked up by a, the hawk or something. Who knows? Yeah. No, he made a home in my skate in the basement. Oh, there you my go. My mom found him the next day. Was he alive? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then what'd you do with him? Brought him back to school? I had to. Well, there you go. See, so you didn't really have a pet there. So, um, it was probably a good thing I had to bring him back. Okay. Well, you know, the, the, the pets that we've had at home, <laughs> in our homes actually for a good while, were just dogs, right? So... That's basically uh, our stories about our dogs right now. And uh, hopefully we're going to have some more uh, fun stories with our dogs and not uh, not some bad medical stories. I mean, we've met uh, quite a few friends, uh, new friends in the neighborhood that we never even talked to before. The power um, of social media. I actually started a group on Facebook uh, for a dog walking group and just said, you know, does anybody uh, want to walk their dogs? Because we wanted to get our puppy out and socialized with other dogs and stuff like that. And we, we met a couple out here that they, they bought a puppy and their puppy was actually born the day before ours was. So once they both had their shots, we ended up meeting up and we've been walking together ever since. So, I mean... We joke around that they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, which which they pretty much are. I mean, they horse around every night. They they go on walks every night. And then we've met some really wonderful people in the neighborhood. I think one night we had 10 dogs out walking. Um, so it is the power of social media. We got a whole bunch of people in the neighborhood together. And I think there's like 60 people in our group that uh, actually want to do walking with the dogs. But, you know, because of this whole coronavirus right, thing right now, I don't think anyone's getting together. So... I mean, hopefully the weather will start to warm up. This whole virus thing will go away. We can start meeting up in the neighborhood again and uh, get our pets together again. So that's basically our uh, our talk on pets right now. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you some more exciting stories. I'm sure I will get Mrs. Awesome back on another episode for something. I know you guys are going to start to make her the star of this show. So hope you guys enjoyed the episode and we will talk to you later. So that was the story of our dogs for Mrs. Awesome and I. Hopefully you have a better idea of the impact that our dogs have had on our lives. I know some of you may say kids will give you that same gratification, but like I mentioned earlier, we'll never know that feeling, so we're just going based on our experiences. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we hope to see you on the next one. Remember to subscribe to our podcast and hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at PodJerky. Look us up on Facebook and YouTube as well. As always, folks, stay healthy, be kind to each other, and we will see you later. Here we go now! Play that beat! Hot jerky.